Hello again, 240. In this video, we will begin Chapter 17, The Democratization of Sports. And we will only do a couple of sections in this particular chapter. And in this part one, we'll talk about sidewalk surfing and the rise of extreme sports. And the anti-establishment impetus that was unleashed during the 1960s had a profound impact upon sports and recreation in the United States. Rebellious youth created a new ethos of anti-establishment attitudes that questioned middle-class conventions. Unkept long hair and grungy clothes challenged the straight, unquote, nature of their parents' generation, as did the use of marijuana and sometimes more powerful drugs, the loosening of sexual practices, and powerful messages of protest and alienation proclaimed by folk and rock musicians. The counterculture had its roots in the civil rights and anti-war movements, but it, mo it also claimed close intellectual moorings with the Beat Generation writers of the 1950s. The rebellion thrived upon the messages of a vanguard of artists who took their place in a long tradition of American protest that expressed dissident ideas through the medium of music. The movement sought to empower marginalized groups and social outcasts and to push back against efforts to repress the complex movement. Emphasis upon individual expression and clarion calls to do your own thing, unquote, led to innovations in sports and recreation. The new emphasis tended to be upon those activities that encouraged individual activity. And that goes against what we were talking about earlier in the semester about immigration and how those team sports helped to get those new immigrants into the mass culture with their involvement in those team activities. Now the pendulum swinging in the opposite direction. These did not require involvement with a group or team. Established sports and recreations like running, tennis, handball, golf, weightlifting, squash, cycling, skiing, and swimming, and we've been talking about this in previous chapters, they gained millions of new adherents. True to the spirit of individualism, sports innovations during the 60s invited participants to break free from conventional activities and encourage them to explore new possibilities. Many youths tended to shun the rigors of football or the tedium of baseball practice conducted under the supervision of adults, and that's key, and embarked instead these activities that were distinctly identified with the counterculture. These activities were tagged with various names, alternative sports, action sports, lifestyle sports. By the onset of the 21st century, they had gained millions of participants and often were lumped together under the term extreme sports. And among these sports that grew from the bottom up, again, this is the democratization of sports, were skateboarding and snowboarding. These new activities gained widespread acceptance among independent-minded youth. And what distinguished these new inventions is that they were established and grew free from the clutch of organized sports, drawing participants through underground and informal social networks. Efforts to create rules and organize competitions were met with a tide of passive resistance. In many communities, efforts were made by local government officials to curb and even forbid the new generation of enthusiasts from engaging in these activities, somehow considered out of bounds. Just as traditionalists denounced the protest-laden folk and rock musics of such artists as the Grateful Dead, Bob Dylan, and the Beatles, those who considered themselves defenders of the established order urged local officials to ban skateboarders from public places. Skateboarding had its roots in the surfing tradition that had attracted a small but dedicated group of enthusiasts to Southern Californian beaches ever since the first primitive wooden boards had been imported from Hawaii early in the 20th century. During the 1950s, the possibility of surfing downhill on streets and sidewalks produced crude wooden decks that were placed upon traditional metal roller skate wheels. These contraptions were unwieldy and led to many a fall. Impact with the concrete waves, unquote, often produced injuries. Because the equipment proved inadequate, the infant sport lost much of its appeal. 
but it had gained a foothold, even penetrating the Midwest, Oklahoma City in particular. Significantly, the first copies of Skateboarder hit the stands in 1964 amidst the heights of the social protest movement. The nascent activity of sidewalk surfing was revived with a rush in the 1970s when urethane wheels were attached to composition boards with adhesive surfaces. Manufacturers produced an exciting new product and specialized board shops soon were selling colorful decks to a rapidly expanding market of young enthusiasts. Innovations by manufacturers produced boards that were meant to be ridden hard, low, and fast. The sport took hold and made quantum leaps in participation levels when low-to-the-ground skateboarding maneuvers were created. Adhesive surfaces made it possible for riders to seemingly defy gravity by propelling their board into the air while maintaining contact until landing. Leading in the development of these daring maneuvers was Florida teenager Alan Ali Gelfand, who popularized the Ali Air Maneuver in which the skateboarder propels himself into the air and, while maintaining contact with the board, does a 360 degree twist and lands intact. In San Diego, another teenager, Tony Hawk, helped to popularize the sport and use skateboarding as an entree into an acting career. And there's Tony Hawk from November the 9th, 2009 in VegasNews.com. This was an event that was held at the Wynn Resorts and Casino. And here he's shown demonstrating his new video game skateboarding. Wow. One feature of skateboarding was that it could be practiced on most any hard surface. Among the most popular surfaces were slow parking lots and side streets, but empty swimming pools in the late 1970s, the result of a prolonged drought in Southern California and an economic recession, as we talked about in earlier chapters, had a special attraction. The famed Z-Boys who took up the sport in the Southern California beach communities of Santa Monica, Ocean Park, and Venice Beach became the center of attraction for the new sport. The initial relationship between skateboarding and water surfing was readily evident because this pioneering group of skateboarders had already become proficient on the ocean waves. The area in which they developed their skateboard moves was known as Dogtown. This diverse urban area of small shops, bars, and apartments offered plenty of paved sloping and banked surfaces. It was here that Jeff Ho and Skip Engblom established Zephyr Productions in 1971 and began designing and manufacturing surfboards. They later moved into skateboards. They expanded their business to produce colorful boards that featured graffiti symbols, graffiti symbols prominent in the multi-ethnic neighborhood. The Zephyr skateboarding team pioneered in developing moves that spread quickly across the country. And this is from imdb.com this is the documentary dogtown and z boys and the birth of extreme and stacy peralta's prize-winning documentary film dogtown and z boys a film about the birth of the now was released in 2001 as the documentary makes clear the z boys worked very hard to develop their trademark moves good old-fashioned american hard work and competitiveness undermined the work of the Z-Boys. They established the standards for the emerging sport. And after years of efforts to banish skateboarders from the public places failed, pragmatic city recreation directors decided to build skateboarding venues in public parts that greatly reduced the level of generational conflict. And these were popularized by the construction of hard surface half-pipe ramps. And with winners being determined by high, how, how high they could fly above the edge of the ramp, execute spins, and land safely back within the confines of the half pipe. And we'll have a little bit more on skateboarding in part two when we talk about snowboarding and some of the other extreme sports.